This is Movie Turn. Leslie Mitchell reporting. Nelson must have turned in his grave when they finally raised anchor at the Admiralty and moved across Whitehall to join the new Ministry of Defence. Here, the Navy, the Army and the Air Force will be jointly administered by the Defence Council. The old Admiralty was built in 1725 by Thomas Ripley. The Dutch chairs in the main hall, thought to be 300 years old, no doubt protected night porters from the blasts of passing admirals. The fine brass lamp was suspended in 1780 to light their vigil. Did you know that in the 1790s you paid tax if you owned a clock? And the Admiralty installed this one so that the public could see the time for free. The original model for the Nelson statue in Trafalgar Square faces you as you enter. Among the great Admiral's relics, his signature, made first with his right hand, then his left. Pepys is a name to reckon with in the history of the Royal Navy. Samuel was the first secretary to the Lord High Admiral. First Lord at the time of the American War of Independence, the Earl of Sandwich lived in the Admiralty with his mistress, Martha Ray. They must have been more tolerant in those days. The portraits and pictures tell the story of the Navy for nearly three centuries. First Lord's Room is dominated by memories of the man who held office there for two terms. Sir Winston Churchill is supposed to have kicked in this cupboard door in a fit of rage. Also preserved, the famous Zimmermann message. An Admiralty team deciphered this German message during World War I, with the result that America declared war on Germany. The hydrographer's department has over 8,000 charts and they offer some interesting comparisons. A book of Spanish charts captured in 1681 detailed the Pacific coast of South America. A book of charts which includes working instruments for navigation. The theme of navigation is continued in the famous boardroom wood carvings which flank the fireplace, work attributed to Grinling Gibbons. table, which has been in use since 1725, was modified to accept the stomach of a rather oversized admiral of 24 stone. The white mark beside the fireplace is reputed to represent the height of Lord Nelson. But one of the most fascinating features is the wind indicator. In the days of sail, their lordships followed that arrow mighty closely. The fortunes of their fleet so often depended on it. Truly a building with a history. No wonder they're sorry to leave. Thank you.